Good afternoon. Welcome to the short, sharp webinar on contractor management best practices, providing practical tips for golf clubs, brought to you by Contractor HQ. My name is Phil Rice. I'm the Director of Risk and Compliance Systems at Contractor HQ, and I head up our Contractor Manage product team. Uh, before we get started, it's great to see that there's a number of uh, golf clubs registered for this event from different jurisdictions in Australia and in New Zealand. Uh, I just preface this discussion by saying that the concepts that we're talking about are designed to apply to the due diligence and the reasonably practicable obligations uh, that are inferred on you by the various safety legislations. And that when we're talking about safety regulators and safety regulator expectations, uh, the, these are common across the, the different regulators. So whether that's WorkSafe New Zealand, uh, SafeWork South Australia, WorkCover Queensland, uh, SafeWork New South Wales, or, work, or WorkSafe in Victoria. Now, a recording of this webinar will be provided to you after the session, as well as PowerPoint deck. Uh, if there's any questions that come up during our discussion, please add those into the chat window as we go. We'll respond to you via email after the session with any answers. And uh, just to highlight, the best question today will receive our Coffee for Your Team promotional prize. Now, through this discussion, you're going to see a recurring theme on one of the passions for our asset contractor HQ, and that's regarding efficiency and effectiveness. In the interest of efficiency, we're going to dive right into the conversation. And regarding effectiveness, we're going to talk to two things today, and that is seven practical steps for you to deliver effective contractor management, and I'll share with you some tips for efficient contractor management processes. But just quickly to give you a background about where my uh, perspective comes from around contractor management, I've worked in the work health and safety space for 10 years uh, across various jurisdictions in Australia, supporting general managers to ensure that they have safe workplaces and ensure that businesses are meeting legal obligations and responsibilities. That's primarily been with internationally branded hotels and a variety of other businesses. And that's led me to see contractor management being delivered in a variety of different settings. Um, some great practices that I've been able to incorporate into what I see as best practice and also understanding the different resourcing challenges that businesses uh, can be facing in the contractor management space. But I'd like to just quickly talk to you about one specific incident that I was part of that really helped form my opinion around the effectiveness and the best practice standard required of contractor management. And that took place here uh, at Crown Plaza Adelaide. Uh, it was in 2012 and I was on site. Uh, and it, the scene was very much similar to this. It was early afternoon, uh, except that in front of the hotel, there were two fire engines and there was an ambulance. And the reason why these emergency vehicles were there is unfortunately 45 minutes prior, a contractor that the hotel had engaged to provide regular maintenance works on its pool chemical dosing system had unfortunately spilt some hydrochloric acid on the ground uh, and then endeavoured to clean that up. They'd seen a mop nearby. I uh, didn't realise that that mop uh, had water on it. Uh, and for those of you playing at home, the combination of hydrochloric acid and water, it's not a good idea. It creates a toxic gas. Uh, and that had caused some burning to the esophagus of the contractor and of course we'd had to alert the emergency services uh, to attend, help the person and, and make the area safe. That incident had led to this small conference room where the general manager and I were sitting and the walls kind of felt like they were closing in because we were being bombarded by a number of questions from an inspector from SafeWork South Australia, who obviously was on site to try and ascertain whether we had any liability in this situation, whether we had done anything wrong to, uh, to create any specific risks, and whether there was any need for a prosecution, uh, fines, or an improvement notice action. And so, of course, we were pretty stressed in that situation, ransacking our documentation to show that we really did have some great processes in place. The inspector was asking us some pretty straightforward questions, as you'd expect. Uh, they were, how had we selected this contractor? What the contractor management process was at the hotel? How that contractor management process had applied in the engagement of this business and in the management of this individual conducting work? How we had taken uh, and factored in risk to the management of this particular work being conducted? And of course, we were being required to provide a number of pieces of evidence to support that the things that we were describing that we had been doing were in fact things that had transpired and could be backed up with uh, documentation. And look, I think 
uh, the, thinking about things from a, an inspector's point of view and in a worst case scenario can be a really good way to verify that we're doing the right thing and we're living up to these due diligence obligations. I, it's been experiences like that that have helped to in, inform my professional opinion about what best practice contract management looks like. And that's why I want to deliver to you these seven practical steps that I uh, recommend that if you have these in place at your golf club, you will have a level of contract to management best practice that would satisfy even a regulator in that kind of uh, high pressure situation. So the first of those steps is to have a process in place around pre-qualification or assessment of potential contractors before you engage them to conduct work. So that's doing things like requesting documentation on safe work practices for how tasks will be being completed, asking about previous safety improvement notices or prosecutions that may have been uh, provided or issued to the business, and asking for a couple of references of other customers that that business is currently working with. So you can contact them to check whether their safety performance is up to the standard that you want to be engaging a vendor to be working at your golf club. Once you've conducted that process and you're engaging businesses, very important to have a register of your contractors. So simply that's a list of the businesses that you're engaging to conduct work on site, the types of work that they're conducting, and then the third step is extrapolating out that register to identify any task specific requirements for these different types of work. And by that I'm meaning things like, if you had an electrician engaged, uh, do, do, the electrician would require a specific license or permit, the, the business would require an electrical license and those sort of things. Safe work procedures may be required for specific tasks and the like. Establishing a register that has the types of work and then these task specific requirements gives you a benchmark or a target for where your contractor management system needs to be aiming to achieve and maintain specific documentation. And that leads us on to the fourth step, uh, which is having an effective document management system in place. So a, a system that will uh, create a clear filing structure for you to store and be able to easily access the documentation that you're obtaining from these contractors, something that's tracking time-bound uh, expiry of licenses, permits, or business registrations, liability certificates of currency, and a practical system that actually works in, in obtaining this documentation, identifying where you're still waiting on documentation, and alerts you to things that are expiring and helps you follow those up in an effective way. Now, once you've got those uh, that system set up, uh, the next thing before any work commences, I'm sure you're familiar with, is developing and delivering a site safety induction. The key steps around that, of course, are identifying key site specific safety information, delivering that to every contractor individual before they're conducting any work at your golf club, and then documenting that this has been delivered and confirm that the key points were understood. And look, in conversations with regulators recently, the, some of the most important safety information in here can be around new hazards. Uh, an inspector from SafeWork New South Wales used the example when I was talking to her, if you had an excavation conducted yesterday uh, at your golf club, then any induction from today onwards should be availing any new contractors of the fact that there's these additional hazards or temporary hazards that may be in place. So very important to be including that uh, in your induction process. Now, with contractors having the right safety information and you having the right documentation on file, we get to the most important point in the contract management process. And that's the audit and verification of the process and the works that are being conducted. What that means is testing that the documentation you've said that you want to obtain and the inductions that you want to deliver are happening. For example, by a spot checking on a monthly basis. Checking that safe work practices are being adhered to. So if you've had safe contractors provide some safe work documentation, it's about taking that safe work documentation from that great filing structure, going out and viewing the works being conducted and checking to see whether it appears that the contractor is, is, is working to the steps that they said, using the equipment that they said they would in the way that they said. And I guess that your overall standard of safety that you expect of anybody working at your golf club is being met while contractors are conducting work. And then of course, documenting the actions that you're taking and following these up. So if you've got gaps in your, your management process, working out how you can address those. And if you see shortfalls in the performance of the contractors in terms of what they're doing, actioning that or escalating it with the business and ultimately over time not tolerating any continual breaches in 
in safety performance of people conducting work at your golf club. And you can see the reason why this is really important is because this is talking to the practical action of contractor safety. And it's those sort of things that a safety regulator will be asking questions of if you're in that unfortunate situation like I was in Adelaide. The final step is defining and implementing some regular reporting to your key stakeholders. So firstly, that's about defining some key metrics that you can use to show the health of your contractor management system and then defining how frequently you want to be reporting on those. Then delivering that reporting to your key stakeholders, and by stakeholders, by key stakeholders here, I'm talking about your management team and colleagues, so the operational aspect of the business, and then your governance or your executive, so either your committee, your general committee, directors or trustees, to show the actions that are being taken in managing contractor safety work. And then of course, action and continuous improvement on the back of this regular reporting and sharing that with those stakeholders as well. So what I put to you is that by implementing those seven steps, you will have an effective contract to management process in place that's adhering to this best practice standard uh, as expected of safety regulators and fulfilling these due diligence uh, and reasonably practicable obligations under your safety legislation. And from my experience, there can be some challenges there. And I guess that's what I've seen in terms of working with regulators over time and different businesses. That informs this kind of core principles around contractor management, which is that contractor management first and foremost needs to be practical. So it needs to be something that works within your business based on the amount of time and resources that you have available. It needs to be perpetual. So contractor management can't be a once a year or twice a year situation. Uh, or task that you conduct, because contractor works are happening all the time, documentation can be expiring, new staff are coming to work at your golf club, so it has to work as part of your overall general operations. It has to be transparent, so if you own the process, you need to be able to quite clearly see whether it's working or not, as do any other of your operational team, and also your general committee or your directors or trustees need to be able to see whether this contract management process is working. And I think that's particularly important when we consider that often contractors from a safety perspective are conducting some of the highest risk works on, uh, on site or at your golf club. There also needs to be this verification process, talking to that audit and verification step. So not just setting this up and letting it go, so a set and forget mode, but testing on a regular basis whether things are working correctly and whether contractors are performing safe work noting that often contractors are working in an unsupervised situ situation. And lastly, using a risk-based approach in terms of how you manage contractors that are working at your golf club. So taking into account the degree of risk around tasks to then dictate how much documentation you require, how much oversight you provide, and potentially then how often you're auditing and checking that those practices are being followed. And look, that's, that's where the system, those steps will deliver on this effective process. We work with a number of different customers and we see people you know, grapple with a number of different challenges in, in achieving this effective contractor management process. When we talk about the golf clubs that we work with, some of the common challenges that we see or areas for improvement are things like confusion on the extent of contractor management responsibilities in particular modes and regarding specific types of work. Gaps in understanding regarding the obligations or the multifaceted nature of some contractor management obligations. Sometimes too much focus on the compliance aspect and getting the documentation part right versus the actual safety performance of businesses and individuals that are working uh, on site at your golf club. In the event where there's, there have been breaches identified or shortfalls, um, sometimes a lack of action and actually then not tolerating that or following that up and documenting that follow up to show that you're doing what you can from that reasonably practicable angle to ensure a safe work environment. And other times there can be an effective contract to management process that looks great on paper, but, but deployed in the actual golf club operational environment just isn't practical and doesn't work. And I think that kind of you know, takes me back to where we come to from a, the contractor HQ perspective around this synergy between effectiveness and efficiency. We know that efficiency is just as important as effectiveness because it's only when you have an efficiently operating 
effective contractor management system, that you've got something that's got a great likelihood of continuing to work uh, and succeed, and succeed over time. And I think a really good example of that is some work that we did with at Woodlands Golf Club in Melbourne and Victoria. And Richard and the team at Woodlands had a great and very effective contractor management system in place. But when we started working with the team, we identified there were a number of, of opportunities to create some efficiencies in the delivery of this effective process. And you can see from this table here that what we we're able to do is take some manual processes and automate those using the contract to manage product, thereby freeing up some time that was otherwise going to be spent in an office managing documentation, filing and follow up to be otherwise spent on this critical audit and verification. So being out on the golf course or around the clubhouse and facilities, checking to see whether contractors are actually doing the right thing. And otherwise the time saved could then be spent on other core safety tasks. Well, I know Richard's on this uh, webinar, maybe Richard used some of that time to also work on a short game, I'm not sure. Uh, but then when we kind of look at that and overlay the efficiency with this effective contract to management process, when we look at contract to manage as a product, uh, when we talk about pre-qualification, contract to manage stores and tracks the documentation associated with contractors. For a register of contractors, that is automated and, and perpetually managed within the contract to management system. Task specific requirements are defined based on the activity types of the contractors that you're engaging and the system will tell you what licenses and permits are required for those type of activities. The document management system is automated as well of course, so the system will track, follow up uh, and store documentation. It will delegate the responsibility for uploading documentation to your suppliers, meaning that you just have to check and approve documentation. The site safety induction process is digitalized. Uh, there's a wizard that means you can update that with any content on a live real-time basis. Uh, and of course, that means that contractors can access that on a phone, tablet, or computer, meaning they can conduct, uh, they can complete their induction before they're at your golf club and before they start billing you for their time. And then lastly, around the reporting, uh, there's dashboard reporting within the contract to manage product that gives you a quick snapshot of how effectively your contract to management process is working any areas you need to focus on, and you can just take a snapshot of that dashboard and put that into your uh, stakeholder reporting for your general committee or your directors or trustees to show the health of the contract and management system at any given time. And of course, very similar to the Woodlands example, you can see that that frees up the time that you'd be otherwise spent on those tasks on this critical and most important audit and verification process, checking the system and checking the works of your contractors, thereby reducing your liability risk uh, around it, it were anything to go wrong. Because let's be honest, effective contractor management does take time. And if I briefly look at a case study of say we had 20 contractors and we're looking at the annual cost around effective contractor management, this documentation tracking and follow up really takes at least 10 minutes per document to receive an email, save a document, update a register, and then file that away. If you had cons conservatively said three documents per supplier on an annual basis, got 10 hours there. Uh, an induction process is gonna take at least 10 minutes to be delivered and five minutes to print and file, should be delivered on an annual basis. And so if you said contractors have on average five staff uh, that were working at your golf club during a 12 month period, that's gonna take you 25 hours to deliver. The audit and verification process that we're talking about, I'd recommend needs to be have at least an hour spent on that a month or and in terms of compiling and checking documentation, physically auditing contract works. And then that stakeholder reporting should be requiring at least an hour of your time per month to be checking, compiling that documentation and then delivering that reporting to your key stakeholders. Quite quickly, you can see you end up with a, a labor cost that's equating to you know, almost eight days a year. And if we kind of do a back of, back of the envelope calculation and say $35 an hour wages plus $15 on cost, then you're already uh, conservatively at $3,000 of time that's being of time cost for managing this effective contract to management process. And of course, this is where the return on investment uh, argument comes into things around investing in a more efficient way of delivering this effective contract management uh, system. But ultimately, you want to be in a position where if like me in Adelaide in 2012, you are sitting in front of a work, a work safe or a safe work inspector uh, because there's been an incident with one of your contractors, if you've got the contractor managed system in place, 
you that's going to give you peace of mind that you're delivering things to this best practice standard so you're not going to be worried uh, like myself and the general manager were and when you explain the steps that you're taking and you can easily put your hand on the evidence of these steps and and the fact that it's to this best practice level you're going to be able to satisfy that safety inspector that you've fulfilled your due diligence requirements in terms of trying to ensure as far as reasonably practicable uh, a, a safe workplace and if this is something that you'd like to achieve more peace of mind on uh, please uh, Add, your, uh, add that to your the chat window uh, because we've got some starter packs available uh, for those who have been attending this webinar uh, for a, a short-term promotion. And that really concludes the discussion around um, these contract management best practices giving you these practical tips. Uh, I hope that's been uh, helpful for you to understand or measure where you're currently at in terms of your contract to management processes against this best practice standard and identify any opportunities that you might have to shift the needle. Uh, what I'll do to help with that is after the session, we'll share with you a self-assessment checklist so you can go through there and identify any gaps or opportunities. Uh, we'll share with you the recording of this webinar and the presentation deck so that you have that for reference. And of course, uh, we'll share you with you our contact details. We're available to provide any further advice and support. Uh, and to just to re reinforce, if you have any specific questions, please add those into the chat box in the webinar and we'll come back to you via email after the session. And that's all for today. That's the short, sharp session. I, I appreciate your time. It's been great to have the opportunity to share some of my insights with you around what I see as best practice contract to management. And I really hope that those practical steps are something that you can take away to either give you peace of mind that you're in the right space or some clear uh, opportunity and direction to uh, close that out. Thanks very much for your time. Have a great afternoon. I'm Phil Rice. I'm signing out.